Good morning and uh, welcome to our live stream of our Sunday morning worship service here at King City Bible Church. I trust that everyone's doing well. Uh, I trust that, uh, like myself, uh, especially for, for those of us up here uh, in the Pine Canyon area, we're uh, praising God for a, a little bit of a, a clearer sky, um, the air quality a, a little better, and we're thankful for that. Um, we want to uh, continue uh, to pray uh, for uh, our uh, firefighters, uh, you know, those who are local, those who've come from a great distance and are here in the, the King City uh, area, down in King City themselves, uh, uh, and they're just working so hard uh, each and every day uh, to, uh, and, and night uh, to, uh, to battle these blazes. And of course, it's not only here in our own community, but we want to think of the many firefighters who are uh, working tirelessly throughout our state. Uh, and our neighboring states as well. Uh, so we're going to lift them up in prayer again this morning. Uh, we're also going to continue to lift up in prayer those uh, who are being affected personally uh, by the coronavirus. Uh, it's staggering uh, sometimes, you know, when you really think uh, upon the number of people uh, who have been affected by this, uh, physically uh, affected by this. And uh, then you think of the great number more uh, family members who are watching uh, their loved ones who have been afflicted. And, uh, you know, when you begin to, to count the suffering and it's so great. Uh, we, don't, we certainly don't want to have that uh, be absent from our minds. Uh, we want to continue to pray uh, for those uh, who are uh, being deeply affected by this. Uh, many, for many of us, uh, you know, there's inconveniences, uh, there's struggles, uh, certainly. Uh, you know, many of us are dealing with uh, uh, emotional and, and uh, you know, uh, mental afflictions possibly because of, of all of this, dealing with isolation, possibly anxieties and uh, perhaps uh, doubts and, and depression and so on that might come from that. And that too is very harmful and uh, we certainly want to lift uh, everyone up in prayer as we continue uh, the struggle uh, in the time of this pandemic. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We have a good word again today from the 91st Psalm. Uh, in light of all of these uh, things that are happening in these days, uh, we've been uh, going under this heading of safe and secure. What, what, what wonderful words uh, to hear uh, in any day. Uh, so we uh, just want to thank the, the Lord today for allowing us to go back into the word. I hope uh, that you will know his strength. Uh, uh, he certainly gives the strength for the day, uh, as we're told back in Deuteronomy. And uh, we're uh, hopeful for that today and all our days. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and see what he has for us uh, in his word today. Lord, uh, we, th we just thank you so much uh, for this morning. Lord, thank you for uh, it, what a blessing it is to see blue skies. Uh, it's, a, it's a joy to have a, a cooling breeze that's been coming through in the afternoon, Lord. Uh, what a blessing it is to know that the air quality has improved some uh, from what it was, and uh, that's, uh, thank you. Oh, it's just, a, that's a joy. Um, Lord, as I, I stood outside yesterday in the afternoon in the shade for just a few moments, enjoying that breeze and, uh, and just looking out uh, up over the hill and in the sky, and what a, what a joy it was. So uh, thank you for those moments, Lord. Uh, we understand, Lord, that there's, the fires continue to burn, uh, and they are, uh, they just seem like monsters, Lord. It's just, uh, for the firefighters to stand up uh, against something so uh, great and, and terrifying, really, is just, uh, Remarkable, I Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to uh, give them strength, uh, give them courage, 
uh, to fight on. Uh, we just thank you so much uh, for their service, uh, seeking to protect uh, our lives and our properties. Uh, we're just so grateful and pray that uh, you would be with them. Give them rest, give them peace, give their families peace. And again, Lord, uh, bolster them with, with great strength and courage. I pray that uh, those firefighters who know you uh, would continue to look to you. Their eyes would uh, be lifted high above all of this uh, great struggle and that they, they would see you and know that their peace and joy and strength comes from you, that they would be a great witness to others around them who do not know you. Uh, perhaps they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior, uh, understanding uh, that uh, uh, there is a supernatural strength and peace and love and, and joy that keeps us going. And uh, may they know that. Lord, we want to continue to pray for the great many. Uh, who are being affl afflicted uh, by the coronavirus. There are so many who are personally are being physically uh, touched by this virus and uh, they need you. Lord, uh, their family members need you as they watch their loved ones. They can't see them, perhaps. They can't be near them by their side to comfort them, Lord. They. They need to trust in you, that you're there with them, comforting them. Pray, Lord, uh, for, the, for the many uh, still who are just, again, just uh, feeling the, uh, the great struggle. Uh, there have been so many changes uh, to their lifestyles, working conditions, uh, home life whatever it might be that's bringing uh, great anxieties and uh, stress and, and discouragement, doubt, perhaps even depression, Lord, and just help them, Lord. Be with them, uh, be with all of us in those times of loneliness and despair. Uh, we need you. We need you. We need to be carried up high above all of this. And uh, so can't do that on our own, and we just want to trust in you, Lord. May we continue to look to you these days, all our days, Lord. We trust that you'll be with us this morning, that your spirit would help us to understand the word that's before us, that you would speak to us through your word, the words of the psalmist, that we would be brought ever nearer, closer into a relationship with you, that we would that would def, we would certainly know the safety and security that we have in you. Uh, I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. So let me read that ninety-first Psalm as I've been doing these past couple weeks. Psalm ninety-one: He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample 
the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word for our hearts this very day. You know, friends, as I'm preaching through this 91st Psalm, uh, it's truly, uh, truly my prayer that these absolute, eternal truths are, are coming to your aid in these days. I, I really, you know, I really pray that this is the case. Does God shelter you under his wing? Do you find that God brings you his protection and that God brings you his peace when you're faced with whatever trouble, trial, disaster, calamity? You know, I I was thinking, you know, so, some of you might be saying, you know, Pastor Jim, I, I hear these truths, and I, I've been hearing you these past weeks. I'm ready to listen again this morning, but, you know, you're not experiencing what I'm experiencing. I could almost hear people saying it. You know, you just, I hear them, but if you knew, Pastor, what I was experiencing, you know, w when you're in it, you know, it's, it's a different matter altogether when, you, when you're in the midst of this. And, you know, friends, that's absolutely fair. I hear you. But, you know, our duty as believers isn't to grapple with the truth. Our duty as believers is to continue to state the truth, right? Right? We have to continue to do that. We have to preach the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And so that means that no matter, no matter how hard the truth is or how uncomfortable uh, the reception of, of the truth becomes or even how difficult we uh, find it to live up to the truth, it never absolves us from preaching the truth. And so we just have to keep preaching it. Just keep stating and preaching the, the truth. But still, you know, we find a lot of biblical truths are just very, very difficult to, uh, uh, to implement into our lives and uh, even further to put into practice. So we need absolute assurance from God that these truths that we're hearing in this psalm that we've been hearing over these past weeks that we will hear again this morning that these truths are for us are for those of us who abide in him who remain in him you know how can we know that when we're faced with 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 trouble when we're faced with disease when we're faced with problems when we're faced with tribulations, faced with enemies, how do we know that he will actually be there to protect us as we go through it? That he'll be with us right in the very midst of whatever that is. You know, the psalmist says, friends, and you heard it, uh, we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 13 this morning. The psalmist says that he gives us his guardians. God has provided protectors and God has provided his promises that absolutely assure us of his protection. So friends, I know it's hard uh, and I am not experiencing everything that you are. In fact, I would say that probably we're very uniquely, uh, you know, it, experiencing different things mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually uh, during these times. But we need to embrace these truths. It's hard, but they're for us. 
They're for you. They're for you. So how does God protect us in the midst of our troubles? Well, we've been talking uh, these many weeks, but I want to hear I want you to hear this this morning uh, from these verses. You know, we have to remember, first of all, that there's a, a condition that's on these promises. If we go back again to the very first verse of Psalm 91, once more, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We remember that condition. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And then verses 9 and 10 of Psalm 91, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. You might recall those verses uh, from last week. But to hear them, you hear, we, hear, we have to hear the condition within there. You have to dwell in the shelter. You have to dwell in the secret place of the Most High to find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You have to make the Most High your dwelling, your refuge, so that He might take you above the very things that would seek to overtake you as you go through the waters and as you go through the fire. And we talked about that metaphorically. You know, whatever those troubles are, you know, as you're going through it, passing through the waters, going through the fires, these are the conditions. But if we uh, fulfill those conditions and dwell in God, the Word tells us we'll have God's divine protectors. Oh, this is good news for us this morning, that when you and I are in the midst of trouble, there might be afflictions. Yes, we've talked about that. Absolutely. But no evil will touch us. And I want you to hear that this morning. We're going through troubles, we're going through trials, and absolutely, yes, we might be afflicted, we might be touched. However, no evil will overtake us. No evil will touch us. And I want uh, we need to grasp that this morning as believers. How can we know that the evil won't come near our dwelling? How do we know that? How can we know that we'll have real protection right at our very door? How can we be sure? Well, what we read is that he gives us his angels, he gives his angels charge over us. Verse 11, Psalm 91 says, For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. Isn't that incredible? That's what we see this morning. I want to read to you uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. This is from the Amplified Bible. Hebrews 1, 14 says, Are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, that is, to accompany, to protect those will, who will inherit salvation? Of course they are. Right? Uh, we said, uh, was it last week? Daniel was thrown into the midst of hungry lions. We know it. We know the story. And what did God do? We, did he remove the lions? No, he did not remove the lions. He shut the mouths of the lions and Daniel was not harmed. But how? Well, Daniel said, uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, Daniel said, My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lion. Right? It was God's angel. Peter, in the New Testament, he was just lay bound in prison, awaiting execution, and we're told in Acts chapter 12, beginning in verse 6 of Acts chapter 12, 
We're told the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, that Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. And the text tells us that suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. And then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. And when they had walked through the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. And then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know, without a doubt, that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. And uh, that concludes verse 11. Later in that same chapter, in verses 21 through 23, we see angelic power displayed against the wicked king. Uh, the text says, beginning in verse 21 of Acts chapter 12, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a god, not of a man, and immediately because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down. And he was eaten by worms and died. And friends, uh, we know uh, from the historical uh, writings of Josephus that Herod's suffering from the worms uh, lasted five days before he expired. At least it's so said in that, in that recording from history. Uh, Friends, angels are powerful, otherworldly beings. The level of power ascribed to angels in the word of God is absolutely astounding. Absolutely. I, I mean, you look at the power of, of, of a single angel. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. I'm going to read again from the Amplified. 2 Kings chapter 19, beginning in verse 35, the text says, It came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the camp of the Assyrians. And when the survivors got up early in the morning, behold, all 185,000 of them were dead. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 21, again from the Amplified. 2 Chronicles 32, verse 21, says the angel destroyed every brave warrior, commander, and officer in the camp of the king of Assyria. Listen to the power of a single angel. You know, th these angels are, are great awesome, ministering spirits. And, and I would say that the miraculous thing about it is that they're there for us. Now, does that not bring a smile to your face? They're there for us. Our angels continually behold the face of God, our Father, in glory. His dispersal of angels to accompany us and to protect us is an expression of the great love of God for we who remain faithful to him.
You know, these are, are just great beings. They are our guardians. They are powerful beings. But what does the psalm say they are? Listen to this. Friends, when we, when we really look at the text, we understand that they are the figure of God's protection of your life. You know, friends, if you see the angels and don't see God's protection, then you're missing the whole point, right? You know, the angels themselves are not our focus. His protection of us, and that's what we get right here from this psalm, his protection of us is our focus. Please let me say that again. His protection of you and I, that's our focus. The angels, they're only the means of it. They're powerful. They're awesome. But they're dispersed by our divine protector. He's the one who, out of his great love for us, out of his wanting, his desiring to protect us and keep us safe and secure, he sends his angels for us. He sends his guardians. He's commander of the angel armies. Those guardians, those protectors are for us. God wants us to see past the temporal. God wants us to see beyond the disease. God wants us to see past the disability. God wants us to see past all the many, many problems that are at work. He wants us to see beyond all the distress in your home or in your workplace and see that God is able. Oh, that you and I would be able to look beyond all of this and just see that God is able. Lord, give us eyes to see that you are able in the midst of everything, all chaos and hell breaking loose around us, that you're able, God. He is able. He's able. More than able. And then, friends, we get an eternal perspective. You know, have you seen, have you seen God's protecting power in your life? In 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, the king of Syria had sent troops to Dothan to capture the prophet Elisha. And Elisha's servant saw this great army of the enemy encircling the city and became frightened. Oh no, my lord, what shall we do? The servant asked in uh, the second part of uh, Verse 15 of 2 Kings chapter 6. Hear those words. Those are words of fear. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? You know, and I think absolutely, you and I have a similar reaction when we see the reality of the enemy. You know, there, there are all kinds of forces that are at work against us as believers in Christ Jesus. All types of forces at work. We're surrounded, and I don't say this to, to bring fear to your life. This is the reality. The reality is that we are surrounded by a host of hell because Satan, our enemy, the Bible says, this is not me, the Bible says that he is out to destroy us. That's the word of God. And we say, our natural reaction to that is, well, what are we going to do? You know? Oh no! You know, look at all these armies. Look at everything that's against me. Look at everything that's surrounding me. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. But uh, listen to these words. Verses 16 and 17 of 2 Kings chapter 6. Elisha said in verse 16, Don't be afraid, he said to his servant. Those who are with us 
are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Now, friends, what did the servant need to see? What did he need to see? Did, and look, think about it for a moment. Did he need to see the angels? No. No. He needed to see a solution to the great problem that was there before him. That's what he needed to see. He needed to see that they that are with us are more than they that are with them. And I would say that that's what you and I need to see. That's what you and I need to see. Do you, in other words, do you see everything that's against you? And if I'm being honest, there are times when that's the case. When I'm only looking with a certain perspective, and, I, and my eyes are focusing on everything that's against me. Do you have those moments? And if I think, I think if you're being honest with yourself, you probably have those moments when you just see everything that's against you. You know, they that are with you are more than they that are with them. We need to hear that. That's not, you know, isn't that true? That, my friends, is faith and assurance and comfort that's injected from the Word of God into your heart to realize that God is for you. In the midst of everything, God is for you. In the midst of the trouble, the trial, the calamity, and the disaster, whatever that means for you, Personally, in your life right now, God is for you. If you're His, and we remember our conditions, right? But friends, God is for you. And we absolutely know from the Word of God that if God Himself, God Almighty, is for you, then nothing, absolutely, Absolutely nothing can be against you. And you and I need eyes, just like that servant needed eyes to see the solution. We need to see that the Lord is with us because the Lord is the solution. We could look around this world for a solution, and we are not going to find it. We could believe the lies of the enemy who would seek to give us and tell us that here's a solution for you, it would lead us down the wrong path and we would find more trouble. We need to see the solution. We need to see that the Lord is with us. We need to see that his angels are surrounding us. We need to see that his promises are applicable to us. You know, Psalm 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, right? A, a holy, reverent fear of our Lord, and he delivers them. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. What wonderful words, wonderful words. Verses 11 and 12, uh, going back to Psalm 91. Verses 11 and 12. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Listen to those words. It's, a, it's very official. He will command his angels. That's it, right? We got that. And then it's so deeply personal. He will command his angels concerning you. How personal is that? Concerning you to guard you. 
He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. It's official, it's personal, and it's constant in all your ways. We need to hear this. It, 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 that's just such a beautiful promise. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Satan made a, a crafty use of that, uh, of that very promise uh, when Jesus was in the wilderness. When you read the fourth uh, chapter uh, of the Gospel of Matthew, the devil quoted these verses in, in a ploy, really, to get Jesus uh, to seek a demonstration uh, of the angel's care uh, for all of the Jews to see. Uh, verses 5 and 6 of Matthew chapter 4 says the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. And listen to the words. He will command his angels concerning you and they'll lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. But did you hear what was missing? Listen, there's something missing. Satan conveniently left out the phrase to guard you in all your ways. In other words, the promise was made that Jesus would be kept in all his ways. Not in all of the devil's suggestions. If the Lord Jesus was throwing himself off the temple for the devil, he wouldn't have been keeping himself in the ways of God. That's why the devil left out those wonderful words that we read here within the psalm. And Jesus absolutely denounced the idea as testing God. In verse 7 of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. He's saying very much in effect that this is not a chance for me to test my father. This is an opportunity for me to trust my father. And you see the difference. Not to test, but to trust. He, Jesus was saying, will keep me in all my ways. And my way is to lay down my life to let go of my will. Friends, we, we don't, you and I don't need to test him. You and I need to trust him. We need to trust him. Look at verse 12 again, uh, Psalm 91. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And the picture here is of a mother or nurse holding up a sick child in her arms, there's strength and the power of the angels of God to carry the faithful ones in their hands. You know, it's, it's, their, it's their tender care of those who are in a helpless condition. Psalmist said, uh, Psalm 94, verse 18, Psalm 94, 18, if I say my foot has slipped, your compassion and loving kindness, O Lord, will hold me up. When I said my foot is slipping, your love, O Lord, supported me. Another taking of that of that verse I felt as though I was slipping right that's what's being said there I was falling I was I was anxious inside but Lord you comforted me your your love just took me and held me fast you know friends that's what the psalmist is saying. That's what we need 
to hear. You know, we're lifted up so that our feet will not strike against the stone. We're lifted high above those stumbling blocks to our faith, and we can walk securely, as uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 23 says, and our feet will not stumble. We can walk securely, and our feet will not stumble. Safe and secure, friends, in him. Psalm uh, 91, verse 13 says, You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. You know, they, listen, there are those who are just absolutely bent on harming the faithful, right? Throughout the world, there are those who are bent upon harming those who are faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, David said of the wicked in Psalm 58, uh, beginning, in this, uh, beginning in verse 3, Psalm 58, verse 3, from the womb uh, they are wayward, spreading lies, David says of the wicked. Their venom is like the venom of a snake like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. The, the cobra, friends, which, which can't hear at all the charmer, nobody at all, however skillful they might be, can tame it. But God can tame it. Amen. David said of his enemies in Psalm 17, verse 12. Psalm 17, 12. They're like a hungry lion. You know, uh, like a lion hungry for prey. Like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Peter said in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 5, second part of verse 8. Your enemy... The devil prowls around you like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And uh, incidentally, if you look at the verse before that, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you capture that? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And then it's followed by your enemy, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion. We're meant to stay away from the wickedness. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I think absolutely the implication in the context there in 1 Peter is that if you don't bring all your anxieties and worries and cares to God... I th absolutely, the devil will use discouragement and depression to devour you. I would think especially in these days when so many are dealing with that. Just as lions, hungry lions go out after the feeble, after the young, after the stragglers, so it is that the enemy of our souls will always seek out those who are isolated those who are alone or depressed to devour them. Friends, we need the protection of God Almighty. And God is the protector of our souls. No evil will touch it. And we just have to believe it. Don't, especially in these days, friends, with so many anxieties and cares, cast them Give them to him who is your refuge, who is your shield, who is your protector. The enemy is prowling. Be safe and secure in God. David cried uh, to the Lord, Psalm 58, verse 6. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. 
In Psalm uh, 91, verse 13, the great lion is literally the young lion. This is the lion who is at the height of its strength and its ferocity. The, and then, of course, we see the word there in verse 13 uh, rendered serpent. Uh, you know, that's the dragon. Really, it could be translated the most dreadful form of the serpent. So we have these great symbols of satanic power. The lion, snake, the dragon. I, you know, what, what we see there, is, the word of God is saying that even the, the fiercest, the, the strongest, the craftiest and most dreadful enemy of God can be crushed. They can be trampled. All those open and violent foes like the lion, you know, all the secret and the malignant enemies like the cobra, all of them can be crushed. The Apostle Paul said, Romans chapter 16 the first part of verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And friends, that word, that Greek word for crush in Romans chapter 16, verse 20, literally means, and you think about it, and I want you to have that picture of crushing. It's the idea of beating something to a jelly, pounding it, to a pulp. That's the, that's the literal meaning behind the, the word there, that crush. And it gives us such a visual that God will pound Satan to a pulp. Does that sound great? You know, it's not us. We're not doing it. We don't have the strength. He's a powerful enemy. We do not underestimate such a violent and ferocious enemy. Please don't do that. But do know that the strength of God is there and that he has the strength to pound the enemy to a pulp. Praise God. And that's why that, you know, we can say like, uh, like David did, and I'm just going to flip back in my Bible here because I believe it's at the end of Psalm 60. Psalm 60, verse 12, we can say, like David, and this is David when he's, he's composing this psalm while he's fighting the Syrians, and he has no idea yet about the outcome. The outcome of this is all uncertain, and he's composing this. And we read verse 12 of Psalm 60, With God we will gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. Friends, with the strength of God, we fight like heroes, right? And are able to trample every foe underfoot. Praise God. So, as we, uh, as we bring this to a close this morning, if you dwell in God, if you dwell in God, if God is your habitation, your shelter, and we've talked about that over these weeks, you will have protection from Satan's traps. You will have deliverance from the terror of night and the arrow that flies by day. You will have the prospect of the punishment of your enemies, the world, the flesh, the devil. For God is judge, friends of all, the divine judge. You will have victory over every enemy and you'll have complete protection from whatever evil befalls you. Your soul will not be touched. Friends, this is the truth. And the reason I know this is the truth is because I believe faithfully that the word of God is the truth. And these things are coming straight from the word of God, and I will continue to preach these eternal truths. I, I, I miss us gathering together. I miss us all being here together, but you're still going to hear 
the truth of God being preached. And I am confident that you who dwell in him will continue to state these eternal truths. The reception might be challenging. It might be hard for people to believe. Do we believe it? Have we experienced it in our own lives? That he protects us, that he secures us in times of trouble. Friends, may these very truths that we've been hearing, uh, may they penetrate your heart, may they penetrate your very soul today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close. Uh, Lord, thank you for being here with us in the midst of every trial and every trouble and every disaster and calamity, Lord, that comes our way. Lord, we may not be delivered from it. Lord, we may be greatly afflicted physically. Lord, we know. Our flesh may absolutely be touched. We know. And that is so hard for us, Lord. But to know that our souls are safe and secure in you is something that we can hold on to. To know that no evil can befall us, that no evil will touch our souls if we make you our habitation, if we dwell in you. You, our dwelling place, our shelter, our rock, our refuge. Then certainly, Lord, we have that protection. Your shield, your great wings over us. What can touch us? Who can be against us? Lord, thank you for being there with us in the midst of all of it. Whatever it is, whatever each and every one of us is experiencing emotionally, mentally, physically, help us, Lord, to see past the disabilities. Help us to see past all the problems. Help us to see past the struggles. And help us to see past all the challenges before us, Lord. Help us to see the solution. Give us eyes to see the solution. Give us eyes so that we might see you. Give us that eternal perspective that we know there'll be a day when all this is behind us and when every tear is wiped away and pain and death are gone for good and we will live with you forever and ever. Lord, we look forward to that day, but we rejoice that even in these days, these terrible days and uncertain days, that you are with us. You are with us in the midst of everything, and we are safe and secure from all alarm. We are there in the everlasting arms of our great and mighty God. So, thank you. And uh, trust, Lord, that you will continue to watch over your faithful ones and that we will continue to be faithful, abiding in you, seeking to preach your truths no matter what, to hold on to them and know that they're for us, and spread the word so that everyone will know that they too have a Savior who loves them, who, we, who wishes to Pull them away from perishing and be with them forever. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for giving us guardians and protectors. Thank you, Lord, that such an act comes from your love. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the courage and the strength to stand up to enemies, for they cannot touch our souls, safe and secure. In you. Thank you for your mighty word. In Jesus' name, amen.